When you're thinking through medical stuff, it's rarely a black and white answer. It's rarely like cut and dry. It's rarely fit in a little box. Good morning guys. It's kind of humid out here so the camera lens is getting foggier as I talk so I better go inside but first I'm going to hang well it's so foggy I'm gonna hang these baskets we got some hooks put on the poles here we go okay Peter is running up we just got off our Wednesday prayer call with our church which is usually just us and the pastor and like one or two other people um, we really treasure that time. I'm so glad, like we said last night, that I can walk in our bedroom and keep vlogging and I don't have to be like, oh, don't show them the wall because we haven't done the bedroom reveal. Anyway, I today is Wednesday and if you've been around for the last few months, you know that Wednesday is usually like my medical get it all done day. I, I, it's the day where I run out of pills in my cobbler and sub QIG is on Wednesdays. Interestingly, I had an appointment, like a virtual appointment with my immunologist, I guess it was about three weeks ago, and it was right after my CF appointment and we were talking through some of these like odd symptoms, the exhaustion or fatigue, weakness, that sort of thing. and. As we were talking with the immunologist, we kind of decided it's very unlikely that the sub-QIG is what's causing these, but she wanted to do a test. So she said take three weeks off of sub-QIG and then restart it. And so I'll tell you, in the last three weeks since I've been off of it, it's the fatigue is the same. So I think we can yeah, yeah. I was just thinking more details. <laughs> like, when you're thinking through medical stuff, it's rarely a black and white answer. It's rarely like cut and dry. It's rarely fit in a little box. You know, you read the pamphlets, the side effects, the possible side effects, and sometimes, yeah, like you fit in the box and you're like, oh, those are exactly the side effects I have. Other times, you have side effects that aren't in the pamphlet and it's like oh well is it this medication causing that or not so that's kind of we just did the little three week trial off of it and then i'm really excited about the next step of the plan which is once i restart sub qig today we are continuing with it but every other week and when we originally started sub q the immunologist was like, we'll start sub-Q every week and then eventually we'll probably be able to do every other week. So as long as my, a certain blood number, they draw my blood, as, as long as the IgG or whatever the number is that they want is above a certain level, I can stay at every other week. So <clears throat> that's going to be great. I really appreciate that. And um, I just really, you know, I did IVIG for like, what, four years or something? And I was really used to that. And the sub QIG has taken a long time to get used to, and I don't love it. So we will probably be switching back to IVIG at some point whenever we feel like having a nurse in the home is worth the risk. Um, some people have nurses in the home on a daily basis for care. My care has been, you know, most of my stuff we can do um, independently, like flush my port and that sort of thing. But with um, sub-Q or IVIG, they want a nurse in the home when it's infusing. So also, when we restart it as IVIG, we might instead of do every, like in Massachusetts, we were doing every three weeks, but we might switch it to every four or five or six weeks. We'll see. So all of that to be say, like all of that is just 
part of the process, you know? You think through things, you try something. It works, it doesn't work. You move on, you try something else. And I knew that I needed to give Sub-Q IG a try for, it wasn't just gonna be like, oh, let me try it once and see if it's okay. Let me try it twice. No, I knew I needed to try it for like two months to even be able to judge if it works for my body, if it doesn't, et cetera, et cetera. It has been three or four months since I started Sub-QIG. So I need, I'm standing in front of my medical closet because I need to get my Sub-QIG stuff. I need to fill my cobblers. I need to flush my port. <laughs> So I need to get all the supplies for all of that. So, uh, let's see here. One of these, a yellow heparin, etc., etc., etc. Task number one, done. Two weeks filled. Okay, now Peter just finished editing, so he just came in here to flush my port for me. Flush your port. Oh, that's perfect. That way if people are squeamish about needles, it's out of focus. <laughs> All right, here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, don't flex your muscle. <laughs> it's in your muscle, so you're moving it around. Getting out of practice with this thing. Wait, did you? Oh, okay, I thought it had the like needle guard on it. <laughs> yeah, that would be real out of practice. Good. How'd that go? It was good. There it is. All right, test it. Oh yeah, you're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because when we flush it, we don't have to put a tegaderm on because the needle goes in, needle comes out. Oh. Yeah. There's blood. Good old port. This port has been trouble. Okay, sorry, the camera died. The needle's out, and I was just saying that this port has been trouble over the last few years. My first port had, like, no issues. This port, because of the placement, the surgeon placed it, like, almost in my armpit. So it's just really far over, which meant, like, when I'm on IVs, haven't been on IVs in a year. Um, when I like reach forward, the needle can like get out of place. Really troublesome, but it's okay. It's still working. It still has uh, blood draw. It's good. Needle goes in there. Another part of taking care of myself medically <laughs> is some rest time. To not overdo it, take some moments to rest. Hours and hours later, it is so hot out. Let's see this, if it fogs up this time. This right here today, how humid it is and how hot it is. It's like 90 but super humid. It's fogging up again. This is what I thought the southern south would feel like all the time but this is really an exception yeah it's been hot this summer but i feel like we've been able to vlog outside without the camera steaming up so but guys look i got the i got the flower things did you see them yeah i love like them it? thank you you're welcome i um, love it because it's like we're surrounded by plants on the deck so good so i am gonna go <laughs> eat my we're still here, you just can't see us. I am gonna go eat my ice cream cone.
so it's going to be my fat, fat, whatever, you know, it's to take be my fat, my tricasta fat, you have to eat it with like fat and calories or something. So, um, my ice cream is going to be my tricasta snack and I'm going to go up in bed and I've got to do my sub QIG. So I got to go stab myself and as always, we'll see you tomorrow. Good night. I say good night, everybody. Oh, does that smell good? Mmm, <laughs> delicious.